Uh, I'm Stephen Brown. I'm one of the organizers. Let's see, Mike, Josh are out there somewhere. Um, jo Mike here in the back. And, oh, there's Josh right behind me. They're also help me on the committee. We do these events periodically. We've been a little bit, little bit of a slackers this year, so we're kicking back into gear. This has been a topic that we've wanted to do for months. Really excited. TikTok shop. We've got two experts, and we're going to do kind of a two-part presentation, and then we'll do some Q&A. Um, so we have Trent Romp is going to go first. He is, I've got to, I had to write it down, head of marketing for pattern creators. It's a, w a mouthful. And then Michelle Barnum-Smith, who is, um, owns Your Marketing Therapy and has also done a lot with TikTok Shop. And we're going to, they'll go in that order and then we'll reconvene as a group and do a little Q&A. I also want to thank these two. Um, Part of my uh, delay in getting this going was finding a lunch sponsor, and they said, hey, we'll, we'll do it. Um, we don't require speakers to sponsor lunch, but we're very grateful for them to sponsor, and because they did, they get a give a little call to action as part of their presentations. So with that, I'll turn it over to Trent, and we'll go from there. Perfect. You guys hear me okay? All right. Thanks, Stephen. Okay, so as he mentioned, I'm Trent Romp, the head of marketing for Pattern Creators. If you're unfamiliar with that, Pattern Creators is a new business unit within Pattern that runs influencer marketing through a SaaS platform and an agency. And then we just also spun out a TikTok shop division with inside, inside Pattern. So, but I'm curious before we get started, um, who, who is on TikTok shop right now? Two, three people looks like? As of yesterday, nice. Okay, this is going to be great. So you've already gone through a lot of the pain here, and you're going to love this. Who has bought anything on TikTok Shop? Two people, four people, five. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was like, what does that mean? That makes more sense. Yeah. <clears throat> um, anyone running ads on TikTok but not on Shop? Anyone like has never even opened TikTok in their life and knows nothing about it? Okay. No worries, that's, that's not, a, it's totally surprising. Okay, so that just helps me gauge like, what's the level of experience, how deep do we wanna go, um, all of those kinds of things. Hold questions, because I wanna give Michelle her a lot of time. Um, so, you know, chime in, and if we don't get to it later, we'll get to it at the very end. I just wanna make sure she's got her time too. Okay, so let's just talk a little bit about shifting trends, social commerce, why TikTok shop is kind of hot right now, um, the lay of the land as far as e-commerce goes. So to do that, um, let me just talk a little bit about the opportunity in TikTok shop. So TikTok shop actually calls this shoppertainment, which instantly makes me think of like QVC, but way less boring, right? And that's what TikTok is leaning into. They've become very good probably too good in some cases, especially for a dad of four daughters that's terrified of social media, at addicting people to the platform and engaging you with entertaining content, right? And in that motion, through, they've, dis, they've figured out a way now to engage shopping as well. So it's this shoppertainment thing, which is an interesting discipline to try to figure out as a brand or an agency or whatever you're here as an operator because you have this operations side of logistics, product listings, product violations, warehousing, inventory, all of that, plus now kind of a marketing skin on how do I create really good content? How do I get it be engaging? How do I grow followers? And now you kind of need to merge both of these worlds. And a lot of brands are having a hard time finding this unicorn type person that can run both of these things. And Michelle and I were just talking about this earlier today. Even inside Pattern with the amount of resources we have around recruiting, we, we're, st we're still trying to kind of figure this piece out and we're hiring multiple roles to do it. So let me just talk about some of the stats around this shop retainment. So there's different predictions all over the internet. The one that I found that I believed the most is social commerce earnings in the US could hit 80 billion by 2025 and globally the market, which is way bigger in Asia already, is 2.9 trillion by 2026. Well, let's talk a little bit about just behavior of discovering products and researching products between different generations. And I know all of us, me as a millennial, especially love this conversation where you pick out like you're a millennial and you're a Gen Z and we go through the differences. I actually kind of hate this conversation, but let's go into it. So as you can see from this slide, 
This, these are the different channels that these different generations discover products through. So obviously, Baby boomer, Boomers is the highest on TV. They're still discovering products, mostly through TV, right? Ads, all of that kind of thing. And then you can see only 4% of them are finding from influencers on social media. The interesting thing here is dark blue, light blue, and green are all social media. So you kind of need to bucket those together to get the true aspect of how social media is helping people discover products. And then you can see the dramatic shift down to Gen Z. And I know a lot of people are like, well, Gen Z, isn't that like 10-year-olds? No, like some of them are about to be 30 in a couple years, right? So Gen Z millennials, they're discovering over half of their product discovery is happening on social media, either through influencers, ads, um, or friends and family on social media. So you can see this generational shift is happening. The other shift that's happening with just not just product discovery is the willingness to buy on social media as well. So this is something to keep in mind for why TikTok shop is and, and social commerce is a trend you need to start figuring out. Whether or not TikTok gets banned, this is not changing. This trend is continuing. And if it gets banned, I don't know what's going to happen. Someone's going to fill the vacuum here. Some other platform, some other uh, that exists now or that is coming, someone's going to fill that vacuum, is my belief, right? OK, let's talk a little bit more about the genesis of TikTok. So <coughs> a few years ago, TikTok did this hashtag. TikTok made me buy it. And through this hashtag, there were 6.7 million videos created. I can't remember the exact time element, but it was not. It was a very short time span. And there's another study that shows 55% of users purchased a product after seeing the brand on TikTok through this TikTok made me buy it campaign. Now the crazy thing there is that means 55% of these people saw it on TikTok, left the platform at some point, went to the store, went to Amazon, went to D2C site, and completed the purchase there. Who knows in what time frame? So more than half of the people did that. Now TikTok has completely removed that buyer friction. They've said, hey, we can get you discovery right in the moment from these generations that are doing that, and it's millions and millions of people, and remove the friction of them buying it elsewhere and just purchase through TikTok shop. Then on top of that, they're loading it with their war chest of money and tons of incentives. Like if you've ever logged into TikTok shop, you'll immediately see first time buyers get 25% off. That's not coming from the brand, that's just TikTok giving billions of dollars to consumers like us to uh, j drive adoption. Okay, so enter TikTok shop. Here's a little bit more stats on the impact plus growth. So the other interesting thing to think about is, yes, Gen Z is using TikTok, they're discovering products on there, but an even more interesting thing for me as a marketer is what's happening to online search. We know like ChatGPT is taking some of Google search away. I don't know if anybody has on their lead forms and, or if anybody knows a marketer where they ask, how did you hear about us? You're starting to see chat GPT pop up more and more on that, on that form. So it's taking a bit of Google search. The other thing that's taking a piece of Google search, especially with Gen Z, is TikTok. So in this study, 43% of Gen Z initiating online product searches on TikTok. So Gen Z, TikTok's outpacing both Google and Amazon on product search. So it's not only just like this impromptu, you know, I'm, sh I'm entertaining myself and this product comes up, actually Gen Z is starting, in a large case, their product search, their product discovery, their product validation on TikTok. Like, what's the best product for my eyelashes? What's the best creatine I should take, et cetera, right? And then by 2026, an estimated 40 million users in the US are projected to make purchases directly through TikTok shop. One other stat on this search, we just onboarded um, a brand that did very close to 20 billion in revenue last year globally in sales on TikTok shop. And they had 300,000 product searches last month for one of their products. And their SKU inventory is ginormous. So they're projected to be a million per month brand on TikTok shop alone this year. And then we'll see that continue to grow. So the, the search factor is a thing that I don't want you to ignore. It's not completely there yet, and Amazon and Google still dominate, but it is, that's also coming, so it's something to think about. 
Okay, here's some other quick stats. So in the US, there's 150 million monthly active users on TikTok, that's growing. Three and four users say they are likely to buy from a brand they've seen on TikTok shop. 70% of TikTok users discover new brands and products. 83% of TikTok users say that it plays a role in purchase decisions. That's kind of back to my last slide. Like, they're also just looking for, is this the right product to buy? Is this, they're looking for reviews, they're looking for tutorials, how-tos, all of those kinds of things. Then 39% of Americans reported being likely to purchase directly from TikTok in 2023. And there's another stat about specifically US social commerce sales expect to hit 150 billion in 2028. I never really like totally trust those numbers. Who knows what's gonna happen in 2028, but. Okay, so what I wanna do is because there's a good handful of people that have never bought anything on TikTok that aren't on TikTok shop is just give you the lay of the land really quick about actually what is it? Because that's one of the number one questions I get is well, what the heck is this thing, right? So really quick, this is an example of the user experience through TikTok shops. You can see in this GIF, you're scrolling through your feed, you're and the f on the For You page, which is algorithm-based to personalize content to what you might enjoy, and a shoppable video will, will pop up. You can tell it's shoppable because in the bottom left corner here, it'll have this little shop link. That's pretty much what TikTok Shop is, the ability to embed shoppable links inside of content. Once you click that link, you can see it goes straight to the product listing page, and then they could check out from there. So that's one thing that a lot of brands are confused by is, yes, you can build a shop, which I'll show you later, but that's generally not the experience consumers go through. They're just hitting the product link and going straight to the product listing. Um, and another interesting stat here is, last we spoke to TikTok about this data, it's about tw 10 to 20% of sales are coming from the shop tab. So let me show you these. I'll back up here. Well, let's just remember, because, so there's a shop tab, and then there's the search. So only 10 to 20% of sales are coming from those two buyer journeys. 80 to 90% are coming from content, and most of that, for most brands right now, is driven by affiliates. So if you're thinking about doing TikTok shop, but you're also very, very, very precious about your marketing, and you do not want affiliates talking about your brand, you're going to fail on TikTok shop. Like you have to play the affiliate game, and you have to play it probably the largest scale you've ever played in your e-com operating days is what we're seeing. Okay, so here's a couple of the other features that make up TikTok Shop. So on the left is a shoppable video, so you can see the shop link at the bottom. Um, then there's the shop page, so this is from the brand and it's in the shopping experience specifically. Then there's live shopping, uh, I've just been trying to learn as much as I can, so I've actually hosted the last three pot pattern shop lives, and it's been a, a blast actually trying to figure out how do you entertain people but also sell stuff at the same time. So if anybody's like tried to do live shopping or curious about it, I'd love to talk about that. The shop tab, this is what I was talking about. So when you're using TikTok, you can be in the For You page. This just scroll, scroll, scroll through video, 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 video. You can watch the people you're following, or you can click the shop tab, and it's curated deals and recommendations based on the user. And then there's also the buy. So after you click a product listing here or in the shoppable video um, or in the live shopping, you will land on the product page and then you can see the checkout is pretty similar to any checkout experience you've seen. Okay, so shoppable videos, like I've said, you just embed product links within your short video content. Your brand needs to be good at posting this on your own channel, but you also need to fuel it with affiliates uh, another common tactic we're seeing is just recruiting affiliates, not with a commission, but with a flat, like here's $50 or a free product. If you give us a video, send us the video and we'll post it on our channel instead of you posting it on yours. So bo both of those channels are, are critical. Then this is the shop page. So you could see an example of a brand page. That's their marketing handle on TikTok. So the, all of their marketing videos, it shows how many followers they have, the likes, and then when you enable TikTok Shop, as you've probably seen now, you have now the shop link on your brand handle. When you click that, it takes you to their shop center, and then you can progress on to the product detail. Okay, then live shopping. Um, it's a crazy game. In uh, other countries, this is massive. 
I, I don't know if anybody's seen the YouTube videos of like the live kind of farms with cubicles. Uh, we have a team in China at Pattern that does a ton of live streaming on different platforms like Alibaba, Jet, uh, Douyin, which is TikTok's counterpart in China, and Pinduoduo. So they are a lot more adopted with live streaming and they have a lot more features. So one of the craziest things I've seen is a dog treat, dog toy brand named Kong. We created an AI avatar of this cute little corgi. It looks like something Pixar would make. And we uploaded all the product information for this brand into the LLM inside of these platforms. And now that dog runs 24 seven live streams. So anybody in the comments can be like, hey, what colors does this product come in? And the dog has a little voice and it speaks in Chinese and it says, it comes in red, blue, and yellow. You can buy it here and it pop pops the link. Like it's a crazy accelerated different world out there that we're trying to figure out how to play that game here as well. So um, it's, it's actually kind of fun in different ways. Okay, then the shop tab. I won't go into too much depth here, but you can kind of see some of the things I've already talked about. <coughs> okay, so this is a snapshot really quick of kind of the back end. So this is the affiliate center. This is where kind of most of the magic happens inside TikTok shop, where you reach out to affiliates, you create open collabs, and you get as many affiliates as you can. It's, in my opinion, right now, a little bit like cryptocurrency meme coin games, where you have all these discords and all these subreddits of a bunch of people on affiliate TikTok, and somebody will say, hey, this creatine from Beast is popping right now, and you'll have a bunch of people all of a sudden be like, I just applied, I just applied, I just applied. Very similar to like 2018, where it was like, buy this meme coin Solana right now or, or whatever, Doge, and like go, right? And everybody would go buy. It's, it's like, to me, it feels very much like that. So there's two ways to work with affiliates. There's targeted collaborations where you actually specifically choose creators you wanna work with through TikTok filters. You set percentages of commission. All of this is affiliate marketing, so it's percentage of commission after sale on these different campaigns you can run and you can send them the product link or you can send them a set of product links to, to run these collabs. Then they accept, you can send them free samples through TikTok um, and then they run their content and it even has, not on this screen, but it'll show you like sample received, content delivered, um, approved and posted and you can track the whole process. Then there's open collab where you literally just set, I want everyone that's an affiliate on TikTok to get 10% commission rate unless they're part of a targeted collab and anybody on the platform can grab my product and go. That one is not as organic or cool as it sounds. Like you can't just list on there and all of a sudden make money unless for some reason your product goes viral. So it's very critical to try to do targeted collabs and even on open collabs to still do a bunch of outreach to recruiters and try to get them in this process. Then this is a snapshot of a seller center. So I just like to show this to people because a lot of times brands come to me and they think TikTok is just another channel that they can deliver on really quick. They don't, they're not thinking about it as a separate marketplace with its own shipping options, with its own account health violations, with its own product listing, like mayhem that you have to sometimes weed through to get things live. Um, it's its own marketplace. So it's, it can't just be set up and ignored. Uh, if you wanna really drive sales through it, you have to push some dedicated effort into it, just like you would with D2C, Amazon, Walmart, or any of your other marketplaces. Okay, paid media, I just really wanna quickly show some of my thoughts here. This is one of the brands we at run ads for. Right now, they're at a 5.4 ROAS with over a million in revenue, which is a, if anybody knows social media ads right now, that's a really high, ROAS right now. This is this is only product, so yeah, CPG. There's no, we, yeah, we've done a little bit of that, but we're all CPG based. So I'm gonna be running B2B ads, and so we can talk about that later. And we'll like collab on it in the future and see how everything's going. But there's two things I really want to point out with paid media on TikTok. One is we've seen data that says. Like I can't actually prove it, but the data I have shows TikTok is actually stripping attribution. So if you are running ads on TikTok to Amazon or to D2C, they are stripping attribution so that you can't measure it came from TikTok. 
The reason they are doing that is they don't want you sending traffic off platform. They want you running shop ads so that the closed loop, and, and honestly, like you'd be crazy not to because it's a closed loop system and Michelle will go into this in more depth. The other one is TikTok is incentivized to favor ads on their platform. They get an 8% referral fee for every sale that happens in shop, so they can take a clip of that after you also give them your ad spend. So they're incentivized in two ways, to favor your ads plus remove attribution to make your ads look like they perform poorly when you send traffic off TikTok, and then as soon as you put it on, it's like, wow, it's magic. It works so much better, right? So be mindful of that. And here's a uh, just a few of the ad types you can run. You have my phone. I just want to make sure I'm good on time for you. Just give me a, in my five minutes left. Yeah, just throw the phone at me. I think we're good, right? Okay. And then that's that's uh, that's my spiel. So pattern creators were your official TSP. Just really quickly, want to show things we help with. So we we work with two different models: either an agency retainer model or a rev, rev share model. If anyone is familiar with how Pattern works, Pattern typically will go and partner with brands and acquire a large percentage of, of their inventory and manage the full process on all their marketplaces they want to go on. So for example, we would go buy 50 million of a brand's inventory and warehouse it ourselves and do the fulfillment and everything and run all of Amazon for them. And we just take profit from uh, our markup because we buy it at a wholesale price. So it's a 3P model. Um, on the TikTok shop side, we're a little more nuanced. We can do an agency model, we can do rev share, or if you can get through the pattern brand qualification partnership, we will actually purchase inventory and sell it for you on TikTok shop, which is what we're doing with that brand. I told you that's like 300,000 searches, the $20 billion brand. Um, so in these different models, we can help in a bunch of different ways. These are kind of a la carte or it's full service. So shop setup and management, affiliate, creator strategy and ops, paid media, content creation, both acquiring UGC for you, as well as we have an in-house team of content creators that will also manage and run live streams, which has been really fun. We'll help with education and collab, and then we also have our fulfillment arm that will do, that'll take care of all the warehousing inventory and fulfillment of your shop orders. So if you want more info or connect with me or learn more, there's my phone number. Please don't abuse that and my email. Um, and that's it for me. I'll hand it over to Michelle. because TikTok shop is so new that it's really hard to find people in Utah who know anything about it. So if you're one of those people who knows something about it, we're gonna be working on doing a type of in-person workshop pretty soon um, so that people can get hands-on with TikTok, get hands-on help, hands-on support. Um, so please let us know. Because um, most of the time I'm talking outside of Utah, I'm speaking outside of Utah. So just a brief introduction, <clears throat> I've been doing marketing for 24 years, and it was hard to believe I do moisturize. So um, I specifically have been in the Amazon space since 2017, and um, I hate to brag, but I'm a little bit of an expert over there on um, all things external marketing. I've spoken on all the Amazon major events and podcasts, and, and some of you know me in here from that. Um, featured in Forbes, been a uh, featured speaker at Traffic and Conversion um, three times, which is a huge digital marketing summit. And, um, and I've personally launched over 30 brands on TikTok Shop and trained over 300 brands on TikTok Shop. So um, what I'm going to do now is how excited are you guys about TikTok Shop? After you've seen the opportunity that Trenton has talked about, how many of you are like, yes, we are going to go after this? <laughs> Here's the thing, guys. Go get your money. Right? Who here hates money? No hands, right? So sometimes, you know, there's fears, there's nuances to new platforms, there's nuances to marketplaces, but people like me and Trenton, we're here to help you, like, actually execute and actually, you know, make some money. So in honor of the upcoming Olympics. Let the games begin. Let's go get it, right? Okay, so just like we talked about, there are nuances to the platform 
And so we want to make sure that you understand what those nuances are before you get started. And I'm a fast talker, so let's do this, okay? Let's, let's just, and there's no clicker, so I'm just going to have to hang out over here. Okay, so first thing you need to know is the TikTok shop is limited to U.S. sellers only. Um, my slides did not come over, like, really well from this. But uh, essentially, TikTok shop requires beneficial owners to have at least 25% um, ownership of a business. There's not a lot of international sellers in here, thankfully, but this is the number one question that we get is uh, people outside of the United States, can they sell on TikTok shop? And the answer is yes, with a U.S. partner who has at least 25% ownership. Um, and that's, a U that's an IRS requirement that TikTok shop enforces. That is not a TikTok shop uh, requirement. So the second biggest question that we get is what makes a product TikTokable? Um, the number one thing is demonstrability. Is there something about your product that can be demonstrated easily, quickly, has a hook, has something that captures somebody's attention and can, um, and can demonstrate fairly quickly? Because the attention span on these videos is real fast. Right? We don't have a lot of time to capture attention. So there has to be something that stops people in their tracks. Um, additionally, something that has a unique value proposition. Something that is, there's something unique about your, pro your product. If you're showing up with your supplement biz that is the same as the 27 other uh, supplement sellers on Amazon, that's not gonna really make you stand out. So there has to be something special, unique, interesting about your product that, um, that can help it stand out in that TikTok, in TikTok world. Does it serve a niche? Does, is there a rabid audience passionate about the topic that your product offers a solution to? I have, um, you know, people are always like really suspect about TikTok and, and, and they wonder, is my audience on TikTok? How many of you think that TikTok is just for 20 year olds dancing, dancing in videos? nobody's raising their hands, but I know you're all raising them in your hearts. Um, because this is, this is like, besides the, besides the, you know, I'm the international seller question, this is the second biggest question that I have. Is, is my audience on TikTok? Isn't it just for 20-year-olds and their dancing videos? No, absolutely not. We have a brand that is a survival brand and sells survival products to preppers. And boy, are white males in their mid to late, you know, from 30 to 55 conservatives in the deep south or all over the United States, boy, are they showing up on TikTok because they're buying and they're buying strong. So, and, and, and even, if, even if they're not buying on TikTok shop, we see halo effect on Amazon. So even if they're like, oh, I don't know if I wanna buy from the commies, <laughs> they're over there buying on Amazon, right? They're discovering on the platform. They're hanging out on the platform. And I don't know if you caught it, but there's over a billion users on the platform monthly who spend on average 90 to 95 minutes per day on the platform being entertained, discovering, waiting for your products to show up so they can buy them, right? Priced for impulse purchase. This is the other thing that makes a product TikTokable is somebody's discovering something, they don't want that entertainment that they are like in, in the depths, they're doom scrolling, they call it. Um, they don't want that, you know, uh, interrupted for long. So if your price is priced to sell and priced for impulse buying, you literally, ha has anybody bought a, t a brought, uh, bought a product on TikTok shop? Do it this week, it is deals for you days. Like this is their answer to Prime, uh, Amazon Prime days. In fact, as soon as Amazon, Amazon's always very secretive around when Prime Days is going to be, and as soon as they announced what Prime Days were, uh, TikTok Shop already had Deals For You Days uh, announced, but they just extended it. They're like, okay, that's cute. <laughs> it's now going the whole, the whole time as well. So it's good. It's good. I feel, like, I feel like Amazon finally has a true competitor, right? And that serves all of us. That serves all of us, both the sellers and as buyers. Um, what was I saying? Okay, price for purchase, impulse buying. If you're selling like a high, high value, high price product, you might want to just make sure that you meet one of these other requirements first before hopping on there. Is it demonstrable? Is there something unique? Is there a rabid audience? 
and you're not just rolling in with like, you know, I talked to a guy the other day who sells a tiny bottle of, you know, serum, and it's, you know, it's luxury, it's luxury skincare, and it was like $85 for this tiny, I'm like, no. People will be looking for dupes on the platform. They're looking for the cheap solutions, something that's just as good that they can get at the Dollar Tree, you know? So sometimes if you have questions about it, we can chat. But this is, this is usually where we start. Okay. Next, just like you would with any other marketplace, you want to validate the opportunity for your specific product first. There are lots of tools that are starting to pop up for TikTok. I like this one. It's viralytic.com. And they have... Um, you know, you can very quickly search for your keyword, similar products, and see what is the opportunity here. In this example, we're searching for ashwagandha. You can see that, you know, we've got brands selling 153,000 a month. They have 600, 607 influencers helping to drive their sales. Um, is that an opportunity? I think so, you know. You can also just search on TikTok Shop. You can just get on the app and type in your relevant keyword for, for your product and see is, are people buying? Are people selling and are people buying, right? Are my competitors there? If your competitor's there, you better, you better be getting yourself there, right? You're already behind, right? Um, and you can see, the cool thing on TikTok Shop as well is you can see how many people have bought that product, how many people have that in their cart. So, you know, just the, just the, the information that TikTok provides is really, Great, and that's, and that's huge for that FOMO effect in helping not only other buyers just know like, hey, I can trust this because other people have bought this product too, but it helps you as sellers, you know, identify the opportunity. Next, you want to review the TikTok's prohibited products list and policies. Um, bottom line, just because you can sell it on other marketplaces doesn't mean that you can sell it on TikTok or you can't sell it the way you would sell it on those especially you Shopify sellers. You, you roll in with your supplements making all kinds of claims and you're gonna get yourselves like in accounts deactivated before you even have even started. So be sure to check out prohibited policies, restricted uh, categories first. Um, that, that will help you a lot. Also, be resilient. Don't give up during the sign up process. There's, there's difficulties and sometimes I feel like TikTok doesn't word this really well. Um, Essentially, it's really normal to fail, fail, quote unquote, multiple times during the setup process. And really, it's just TikTok asking you for more documentation, which is really typical. People, I work with Amazon sellers, and to succeed on Amazon, you have to be scrappy. You have to be resilient. And I see people all day long, they just like rolling over and showing TikTok their belly and being like, oh, it's too hard. And I'm like, you're an Amazon seller. What are you doing? You know this is hard. You know it's hard on Amazon. You want to succeed, you got to do the hard work and not just give up. So if you fail, that's typical. Just keep pushing forward. And there's a lot of, um, you know, they provide support as well. You can get on chat and, and, and keep pushing forward. Also, just a note, make sure that you're submitting all your documentation as JPEGs, not PDFs or PNGs. I don't even know why they let you submit their documentation any other way because their system literally only reads JPEGs. So... Just a little, just a little note. Also, I, I told you earlier, but make no claims in any part of your listing. So um, TikTok's recently updated their community guidelines again, and that those community guidelines apply both to the social media side as well as to the seller side. So what you can say about your products has shifted and has changed, especially if you sell any weight or you know products that have effects on weight or weight loss any kind of physical performance or physiological effects. So in this example, um, this brand is selling a mouth tape, and he's just like, I don't, I don't know why this product was suspended. I don't know what was wrong with it. And, it, and he's literally saying, eliminate snoring. I'm like, that, that's a strong claim there, my friend, a claim that you are making. Boost immunity, enhance facial structure, and I'm like, clang, 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 clang. So you have to be very careful in how you actually show up. And, and like I said, the biggest issues I see are with Shopify sellers showing up with, because Shopify is not policing you. You can say whatever you want on your website, right? So just be mindful of that. Okay, also, when you're getting started on the platform, focus on your best sellers. Don't bring your whole catalog over at once. Um, test the opportunity, learn the platform um, with your best products, 
that you're you're most likely to get the best results forward. Too many product products when you're just getting started becomes a distraction, uh, a focus both for your team as well as for affiliates. Um, so that's just an example. Like this particular seller, they just brought it all over in mass, and so they had a small team, and the team was just like, well, what? Which one? Okay, we're gonna just push all of them and spend all the money and and bombard affiliates with it. And it's just it didn't get traction until they just focused on their best seller as the point of their spear. They got some traction with some great affiliates. Affiliates started to trust this brand had good products and that their audiences were responsive to those products. And then they started to go deeper with um, with some of the other products as well. Does that make sense? It's just, it's just human nature to be like, I bring everything over. And it's like, you can bring everything over, but just focus on the best ones first, okay? Tip of the spear. Okay, set up your listings manually at first. Guys, this is one of the biggest issues that I see. So this goes back to making claims. Um, it, is, it is just human nature to try to find the shortcuts. And the shortcuts that TikTok has available, there's lots of apps that will connect your Amazon store, your Shopify store to TikTok. Um, but, and, and that's good from like an inventory syncing standpoint. Um, it's not good from a listing syncing standpoint. There's so many problems, I don't even know where to start. But the biggest one is, remember my, my claims conversation. So if you're making claims on your listings on Shopify, and you bring over all those listings all at once, the, the system, the bot system that checks all of your listings for compliance will start hitting you with violations. And your account violation score will skyrocket before you've even figured out what's going on, and, uh, and then your account will get deactivated and suspended, and never to return. Does that mean you can't set up an account again and start over? You can, but it's, it's problematic. Have you seen that? Have you guys seen that happen? Yeah, so many times. Um, the other issue with syncing listings is if you wanna make a change on TikTok, you wanna experiment with price, you wanna experiment with your title, how you're talking about the products, those types of things, such as on Amazon, all the listings, all the keywords are keyword loaded, right? Your descriptions are keyword loaded. Buyers on TikTok don't shop the same way on Amazon. They don't need all the fluff. They don't need all those hard to read descriptions, hard to read titles, right? So if you want to experiment with your listing and it's synced with Amazon, you would have to make a change to your Amazon listing for the TikTok listing to work. You'd have to change your Shopify listing, price, title, bullets, anything, right? You see the problem? I'm warning you, don't do it. And account reps will tell you, oh, here's a Shopify app, use it. They don't know. They don't know that this is a bad thing to do. So there's bulk upload available, do that instead. But bring, just like I said, bring over your best sellers first, set up your listings manually first, so you just know what's going on, you know how to do it right. Yeah, like I said, there's options. Trenton, was there something you wanna add there? You had a look, so I just wanna make sure. Okay, also know your numbers. So understand the finances associated with selling in a new marketplace, right? We know the referral fee on Amazon is 15%. TikToks is 6% and holding. They were supposed to increase it this July. They're just like, nope, we're gonna stay down here and we're just gonna wait it out and prove, prove how valuable this is. Um, and why this is so important is that you have to, you need to be able to play around with your pricing to make your listings more attractive to your buyers. And that looks like playing around with your price point. And you can't, you can't start to layer free shipping and strike throughs and flash sales and promo codes and coupons and all these things if you're playing by the finances of your Shopify presence or your Amazon presence. You know what I mean? You need to understand, and I'm not an accountant, guys. Get, get ledger gurus to help you do that. But uh, like this is, this is one of the first things that you need to know is what's, what's my price and then what's my play? What's my like absolute top? We can't go beyond that, right? Okay. Um, like I said, offer free shipping. And when you're just getting started, how many of you sell on a different platform? You're in another marketplace. You have your inventory in FBA on Amazon. You're in a 3PL somewhere. 
right? You don't want to have to be like, okay, now I need to forecast for a new marketplace, right? If you're just getting started, just start with your existing inventory in its existing location. Start, there are apps that connect with, you know, Amazon, MCF uh, to, to generate and fulfill those orders for you. Once you do proof of concept and you know that TikTok shop is a good opportunity for your brand, then you can sign up for Fulfilled by TikTok, FBT, which is relatively new, um, and get your products in there. And there's lots, of, there's lots of benefits to doing that, better pricing on your shipping, subsidies, subsidies all over the place. Um, so it's definitely worth it once you know that this is an opportunity for your brand and you want to start forecasting for it. Okay. And then creators are key. Guys, I work with Amazon sellers who never create content. I mean, the only content they ever create is for their listings, right? They would rather chew off their left arm than have to create content for social media or videos or go live, right? And that's why creators are so important to your brands because that's what they do, right? That's what they do. And it used to be, how many of you have worked with influencers in the past? How many of you are an influencer? I'm about to, oh, nice, nice. Okay, so this is a huge opportunity for you. TikTok shop is a huge opportunity for you. Um, so it used to be that the influencer space was, if you were a brand, you were, you would try to find influencers to work with you, and you were paying for the honor of a post from them, right? And then they would create maybe one post for you, maybe two, maybe whatever the, the brand deal is. And then you wait. And you're like, what happened? Did anything happen? Did, any, did it work? Do we know if it worked? You know, everybody's looking at each other and, you know, that kind of a thing. Um, with TikTok Shop, you can see the actual creators who are driving sales, the, the very video that drove the sales, the amount of views that day, the amount of sales that day. And so it becomes very, instead of it like an honor to work with an influencer, you guys are now affiliates. The relationship has shifted. It is a joint venture now because they know they can make money on commissions for sales that they drive. It's such a better business model. It's such a better business model. And like I said, all the loops closed and so you can have all that data. So working with creators really is key. Um, you can take a screenshot of this. This is, this is how I usually teach how to go about and finding creators. This is the open collaboration process. These are the filters that I recommend people start with. And then my three S's for targeted outreach are search, sort, and save, which really comes down to you know, how you are searching for creators to work with. Um, and then just a warning, there's lots of bots, bots solutions out there for that they're usually, they're usually very suspect um, in doing mass outreach to creators, making all sorts of promises. Oh, we're going to reach out to 1,000 creators a day for you or whatever, those kinds of things. Those creators are never going to see those messages, bottom line. So when, you are getting when you're getting started, I know that we all want to skip and go to the, f the fast lane, right? We all want to be in the left-hand lane, right? But sometimes the left-hand lane is where all the crashes happen too, right? So just, just focus on targeted collaboration uh, versus messaging and spamming methods there. Okay, and this is my, just a, a quick, ver this is where the find creators area is within TikTok. And that's the other thing. TikTok is all native. All of this is built in. You're not going off platform to find influencers, to find creators. It's all built into the system. And you can see here exactly how much money they have driven, how successful these people are. It's not about vanity metrics. It's not about how many followers they have. It's literally how much money they drive. We love that so much more um, in, in finding creators to work with. Okay. And then we talked about content is king. Um, just high level from a content production standpoint. Five to ten shoppable videos, video posts per week, and then going live at least three times per week. Now it's like three times per day almost just to help you figure out when the best time is for your brand, your audience to be uh, selling live. And then um, one of the coolest things with ads is because you can see, because of all those closed loops, no longer is social media a question either. Like, is our social media doing anything for us? You can see the actual posts th that you are creating that are driving sales. And like I said, the creator content that's driving sales. So then what you do with that content is you you accelerate 
those posts. You put ad dollars behind those posts. You're not just creating ad creatives in a vacuum. You know that content already converts and you're just pouring gasoline on the fire, okay? Who likes gasoline on fire? <laughs> am, I am I losing you guys? Okay. So high level checklist, just this is, just take this, take a, take a picture of this. This is like kind of your one time checklist. You need to do these things once to be success, to have a successful setup, okay? These are the things that you need to do once. Did you guys get it? Going, going. Oh, I added one more, sorry. Make free samples available. Yep, that's a big one. Okay, and then this is ongoing. This is kind of like more workflow oriented. So these are the things on a daily, weekly, monthly basis that need to be done, okay? You got it? You, am I in the way? Okay. And if you feel over, oh. okay. Go ahead, girl. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I do have these available for you. Right. Because anytime you're learning something new, that comes that overwhelm, right? And I know that we've probably overwhelmed you today, and I do a talk, and I do talk fast. Um, but if you want to dive deeper, I do have a 40-page quick start guide. It's 40 pages of quick, just quick setup. Step-by-step um, -step business registration instructions, product listing setups, steps for success, tips and tricks, and warnings to watch out for. So feel free to scan that QR code, enter your information so I can send it to you. And then I don't do operations, guys, so you can't hire me to like run your shop for you unless you're willing to pony up some equity. Um, but if you are wanting to get up to speed quickly and get you and your, tra your team trained, um, I do have a course and I do offer consulting. So you can take a look at those. Did you miss the QR code? Got it? Anybody else need it? Okay. So like I said, I do have a course in consulting as well that you guys can check out too. So. Should we do some Q&A? Who's excited about this opportunity? You can be honest. You can be honest. Who's overwhelmed and a little scared? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will say that if you're, who here is um, with like an agency or you work for yourself and you're a marketer, those kinds of things, this is a massive skill set to get on immediately and to start like developing competencies for immediately. There is such limited skill set out there and um, go like go make some money basically, right? Uh, and then Trent, Trent will hire you once you've got those yeah, skills. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then how many of you are with brands? Okay, so developing this competency in-house is gonna be important or hiring out to people who know what they're doing, like pattern, so you know, get on it. First, I wanna thank Michelle, Trenton, for this was an awesome kind of, I love the format, the one-two punch, uh, the Q&A, and the lunch. So thank you both for coming. Um, <laughs> they're going to they're gonna hang around, so I'm sure if you want to ask some questions one-on-one, -on -one, they'll be around. If you want to be aware of future events like this, uh, join the Silicon Slopes consumer chapter on siliconslopes.com. We'll communicate these events there. And thanks for coming today. <laughs>